Hi there, everybody. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Andrea Heath's our guest. She's the executive director of Utica Zoo, and the Utica Zoo is what we're going to be talking about. Lots of stuff happening up there, and we'll tell you about it. Lots of stuff to come, too. But before we do that, we're going to say welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be here. It's been a while since you've been in, and in fact, it's been such a long time since you've been here. The last time you were here, the Utica Zoo was trying to get accreditation, mm -hmm. and you hadn't had it yet, but you got it now. Mm -hmm. Big so, deal, huh? Yeah, really big deal. The zoo hadn't been accredited since 2004, 2005 time period. And when I arrived at the zoo in June of 2011, I knew right away that it was something we should aspire to. It's really considered like the good housekeeping, gold seal of approval. Not only that, there's a lot of resources, knowledge shared, opportunities. We have a really great opportunity coming up that I'll talk about with the movie Lion King coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's, we're in good company and there's great benefits to our members and our community. So we're really happy to have achieved it. Is accreditation something that you have to keep reapplying for? It's not even a reapplication. It's every five years and when you go through it again, it's really considered a fresh application. Each time you become accredited, it is accreditation. Um, for us, uh, ours, we got the good news in September of last year and, and all of our media outlets, including this one, were so good to us. They were actually waiting and getting a phone call from us from Seattle, uh, you know, the three hour time lag, so we had live interviews happening and our whole community was just really mm. cheering us on. Um, we, did, we do have some items four or five, uh, one's completed, so four, that are considered progress report uh, check off. You know, we have to check them off. And um, because we hadn't been accredited in so long, we, we're not completely clear. Uh, we're accredited, but we have this year to work on a couple of things that just weren't quite the way that, you know, other zoos might have been able to have them yet. Most of it is financially um, you know, just getting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've got a couple that we need to do. Uh, one is a big one right now, and it's our spider monkey exhibit. And no one would be surprised at these things. They're the kinds of things that people might say, the Utica Zoo is great, but they still have, you know, kind of an old fashioned spider monkey exhibit, especially with what we were just able to accomplish for our gibbon exhibit, which is amazing. Uh, so with the spider monkey exhibit, this summer we need some help from our community because we're going to gut the outside exhibit, get rid of those old chain link bars and fences, and we're going to enlarge in it both height and, and space and make it very natural for our spider monkeys and maybe be able to add a third spider monkey to, to the, I think it's a troop. Mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the way that zoos go today, I mean, I remember as a boy going up to the Utica Zoo, and the Utica Zoo of then versus the Utica Zoo of today is just completely different. It's nice to hear people say that, thank you. And we hear that from visitors all the time, even in the last couple of years. Uh, it was all hands on deck for our staff and volunteers last year to get ready for the AZA inspection. And we were so happy to do it because we were finally taking care of some of the just deferred maintenance things, you know, a rusty piece of, you know, wrought iron fencing or, you know, something that needed to be painted or paved, uh, new electricity put in some areas, heat in areas that there hadn't been, the, um, you know, as efficient heat before. In fact, a lot of the repairs that we made are going to save us money. You know, we're just, we're, we're operating smarter. Mm -hmm. We're really trying to operate like a business. Uh, in Successful that bus business. And yeah. that business is open 363 days a year. Correct? Yeah, that's one of our new tags, UZ363. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas Day, right? Correct. That you're closed. And that's Although the staff is still there. Right. And that's a, that's a tough time for the Utica Zoo. Is it not the winter time? Oh, it's so tough. This yeah. year, past year was really tough in particular. It was really cold and we didn't have that January or February thaw that we often get. And it's been so critical in the past that we've had those couple of really warm days, right smack in the middle of winter. Mm. Everybody was coming to the zoo. Uh, we didn't have that this year. So it was tough on our revenue. Our, our revenue really, really does um, differ during you know October through April mm -hmm. and then May through September is our peak it's like a bell curve and 80 percent of our funding comes in through you know May through the but end your of September. expenses are going up 
and in the winter the expenses are much greater than yeah. the uh, than the income. So we're we're actually rolling out this new program. I would love to just tell you it's called our Animal Hero Program, and what it is it's an opportunity to adopt our animals three different levels: one hundred dollars, fifty dollars, or twenty five dollars each month. So it's a it's really an annual sign on. We're twelve months a year. Uh, somebody will support us with a hundred, fifty, or twenty-five dollar gift. Goes right towards the care of the animal. If we could get every single one of our animals adopted at that level, just even by one person right now, our winter revenue would be so greatly assisted. Mm. And we can do it through PayPal. And the number of animals you have up there, Andrea. We're still around 200, representing about 85 species, and that does include, you know, some of our species. There's a number of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we, right now, just a couple final touches, so um, maybe today, airtime, this will be ready. But um, we're bringing on a palace cat into our children's zoo. It's P-A-L-L-A-S, so I invite uh, your viewers to Google it. In the zoo world, it's kind of called the grumpy cat. Absolutely adorable and it's a solitary animal it's an Asian carnivorous cat not very large but what it lacks in size it totally has in personality and this one came to us from Cheyenne Mountain Zoo it's winter hardy so it'll be able to be seen throughout the whole year uh, so that's a, a new animal that we're adding as we speak uh, we brought in this year some Vizian warty pigs they're called our rock star pigs so we had Big Apple Music sponsor their exhibit they're Ace, Axel and Ozzy from the <laughs> rock bands and um, they're, they're pretty cool looking. Mm. Uh, we, um, so we have babies. We have African Crested Porcupines uh, babies. Uh, they're called Porky Pets. Nigerian Dwarf Goat babies, kids. And our Urials, which are a Middle Eastern type lamb. We have uh, uh, some babies there too. Before we go to the break, uh, what's the most popular animal at the Utica Zoo? Well, our African lions certainly are, you know, the king of our forest mm -hmm. up there and uh, our urban forest up there on uh, Utica Zoo Way and uh, and there are three siblings and they're pretty majestic uh, but I'd say our camels our red pandas we bring we still bring people in from all over the country to do the red panda encounter in fact we're sold out for 2019 starting to book for 2020 and that's where people can go right in the exhibit and feed them some bamboo and uh, you've also got a chance for people to come up there and have parties and things like that. We'll talk about that when sure. we come back. Andrea, he's our guest. We're talking about the Utica Zoo. Short break, right back. <laughs> 